want that perfect restaurant-style pizza crust at home. Crispy on the outside, soft and chewy in the middle. Well, you got a few options. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can build your own wood-burning pizza oven. Do mm. you have one at home? No, I wish. No, I don't have one either. Or you can invest in a pizza stone. Or you can pull out your trusty cast iron skillet. That's what we're doing today. Big cast iron skillet pizza, really crispy bottom. Great toppings, very simple, but it all starts with the dough. Now this is two cups plus two tablespoons, or if you want to be more accurate, 11 ounces of bread flour. We're using bread flour because we want some gluten formation. This is gonna go right into my food processor. And now a little bit of yeast. This is one and an eighth teaspoon of instant yeast. And a little bit of just regular table salt, three quarter teaspoon. I'll go ahead and give this a whirl, just about five pulses, just to mix all these things together. Next, we've got a tablespoon of olive oil for some richness. I'm going to put the lid back on. And I'm going to turn the machine on, and I'll add 3 quarter cup of water. This is heated to about 110 degrees. Now, it doesn't have to be warm in order for that yeast to rise, but it does give it a little head start. I'm going to let that mix until it comes together. That's going to take about 30 seconds. So you can see it's formed a dough ball, a couple scraps in there, that's fine. We're gonna let this rest for two minutes and then I'll let the machine whirl again for another 30 seconds. That's to ensure that we've activated enough gluten. Whee! <laughs> it is fun to watch that go around. <laughs> I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> I wanna lightly flour the bench here. There we go. Take out the big ball. Now, if the dough was super sticky, I would have just added about a tablespoon more flour to the food processor and let it run for another 10 seconds or so. I'm just gonna give this a quick knead. Really, I want the dough to come together and become smooth. Maybe up to a minute of hand kneading is all that's needed. Get it? <laughs> this is looking beautifully smooth. I'm just shaping this into a nice taut ball. And now I've got a bowl that we've greased with a little bit of olive oil. I'll go ahead and coat the top of the dough, flip it over just to make sure it's all coated with that oil. That way the dough does not dry out. And we're gonna let this sit here right on the countertop until it's doubled in size. That's gonna take about an hour and a half. Sounds good. Time to make the sauce. Mm. So we're making a very robust but simple tomato sauce. No cook. Oh, I like that. Super easy, but we want it to have the right texture. We don't want it to be too thin. It'll cause the crust to be very, very soggy. And we've got a 28 ounce can of whole tomatoes packed in their juice. Now we want to get rid of this juice or at least strain it away. We might need some of that a little bit later on. Place them in our food processor. We're going to add a little bit of oil. This is a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, some good flavor there. Two minced garlic cloves. A little bit of red wine vinegar for some ping. <laughs> <laughs> Just a teaspoon will do ya. And a teaspoon of dried oregano. Now we're gonna let all this whirl together in the food processor until it's nice and smooth. Only gonna take about 30 seconds. There we go. Mm. Mm, nice and smooth. So now I'm going to go ahead and pour this into a two cup measuring cup because we want two cups of sauce for our pizza. And you know, a lot of people ask us, what's the difference between using dried herbs versus fresh herbs? And in this sauce, we use dried oregano. Well, we have a very good answer for you. If you want to use fresh versus dried, the ratio is three to one. So if you have three parts fresh, it's one part dried. And in terms of which herbs to use, we like dried herbs that are hearty, such as oregano or thyme. But herbs like parsley or basil, we prefer to use those fresh. Now we want two cups in total, and this is actually gonna make more than just one pizza. So I'm gonna add back enough of the tomato juice to this to measure two cups. Oh, very smart. Now let's give this a quick stir. There we go. The sauce is easy as that. I'm gonna go put it in the fridge. Now it can stay in there for up to a week, but it can also be frozen for up to one month. Our dough has risen nicely. Oh, it has. Doubled in size. And we're just about ready to roll it out. There you go, you can get a better view now for mm. your poking pleasure. I had to do it. <laughs> I love just seeing how well the dough has risen. And you do that by pressing it. And if your little divot in your finger doesn't bounce back, the dough has risen. Now it looks like a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over to the stove. Now here's a 12 inch cast iron skillet. So this is two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. 
and I'll give it a good brush all over the bottom. And it's quite a bit of oil. We actually want it to start to fry that crust Ooh. a little bit. There we go. Let's get back to the dough. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this out again onto a lightly floured countertop. I can always add more flour if I need to. Pretty, pretty dough. Now this makes enough dough for two pizzas. So I'll take a bench scraper and just cut it right in half. There we go. I wanna save half and we can have it at another time. So I'm gonna wrap it in plastic and just put it off to the side. I'm gonna to start to roll this out to an 11 inch circle, patting it first. Now it will snap back a little bit and if it starts to fight me too much, I'll just put a piece of plastic on it and let it sit for another five let minutes. Let it have a timeout. Exactly, that's what it is. It's a dough timeout. You go in the corner, mister. <laughs> I'm gonna use a rolling pin now and start working it out. And it's a rustic pizza. That's my excuse why it's not gonna be a perfect circle. That is always my excuse. This is actually pretty sturdy, so I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up. We're gonna move it over to the cast iron skillet. There we go. Drop it into the pan. And now I'm going to press on the sides just a little bit, just to move it up. Now we're gonna to top it with tomato sauce, and we're using a half a cup of our tomato sauce per pizza. This actually was a hard lesson for me to learn, how restraint on the pizza sauce when you're making a pizza. No, you, you learn the hard way. You start with too much, the pizza gets soggy, it doesn't get crispy on the bottom. A little goes a long way on pizza. Little dabble do ya. So sauce on, now cheese. And oh, we're yeah. using whole milk fresh mozzarella. So this is 12 ounces, enough for two pizzas. We've sliced it into quarter inch thick slices. And you can see that's a pretty naked pizza. Mm -hmm. That's no problem. The cheese is going to melt just a little bit, but a lot of that sauce is going to be exposed in the oven and really caramelize and concentrate in flavor. Now we're not gonna go ahead and put Put this right in the oven. We're gonna give it a head start right here on the stovetop. I'll turn the burner to medium high. And we're gonna let this cook right on the stovetop for about two to four minutes. And that's going to give the bottom a head start. I'm gonna look for the edges to start to get just set. And you're going to see the pizza puff up just a little bit before we head to the oven. And if I peek under, I can see that there's some nice color Ooh, right under gorgeous. there. This is ready to go into a 500 degree oven. It's gonna stay in there until the whole pizza is nice and set and also golden brown. So that's gonna take about seven to 10 minutes. Bye-bye mm, pizza. Oh, it smells like pizza. Oh, it does it look like pizza. This is ready to come out of the skillet. Always wrap the handle because it's super hot. So I'm gonna take an offset spatula and just loosen the bottom. And then I'll tilt the pan and just draw it right out. Hooey! Now we just need a last minute flourish of some chopped basil, mm. about a tablespoon per pizza. That makes it the classic pizza margarita. That's the right. The fresh mozzarella and the basil. And I've got a big old pizza wheel here to cut right through that hearty crust. Oh. I love it when you pick up a pizza pizza and it doesn't flop over so all the toppings fall off onto the plate. All right. Be careful. It's hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. The flavor of that dough is terrific. Mm -hmm. I mean, store-bought dough has nothing on this. And you saw how easy it was to put together. Yep. So move over pizza stones. The cast iron skillet is here to cook your pizza pies. Start with a traditional pizza dough, then make a quick no-cook sauce by processing whole canned tomatoes with garlic and dried oregano. Push the dough into the corners of the skillet before adding the sauce and topping with whole milk mozzarella. Give the crust a head start on the stove top so it gets a nice golden bottom. Then finish the pizza in the oven till golden. That takes about 10 minutes. And there you have it from Cook's Country, a superb recipe for skillet pizza margarita. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>